How well do you know your colors? This is the color wheel, a useful tool for any artist working with color. It shows all the colors of the rainbow laid out in order. Quick pop quiz. Which colors are considered the primary colors? Is it A, cyan, magenta, and yellow? B, red, blue, and yellow? Or C, both? If you answered C for both, you are correct. The primary colors are technically red, blue, and yellow, but they are also any variation of those three colors, which is sometimes cyan, magenta, and yellow. Primary colors can be either warm or cool. We'll get into that in a minute. Are you ready for the next question? Which of these color schemes is considered monochromatic? If you answered A, you are correct. The term the term monochromatic refers to the same color or hue with a variation of tints and shades. In watercolor, you can use a single color and create a great variety of tints just by diluting the paint incrementally with water. Which of these color schemes shows analogous colors? If you answered C, you are correct. Analogous colors are colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. For example, red, red violet, and blue violet. Or yellow, yellow green, and green blue. Analogous colors always look great together. Which of these color schemes shows complementary colors? If you answered B, then yes. Complementary colors are hues that are on opposite sides of the color wheel. For example, blue and orange are opposite each other, and yellow and purple are across from each other. So why does all of this matter? A basic understanding of the color wheel is so important if you want to be able to predict how your colors will play together when you mix them. Let's take a look at our color wheel again. If you split the wheel down the middle, one side consists of cool colors, and on the other side we have warm colors. Greens and violets can go either way, depending on how much yellow or red is in them. If you're not sure if a violet is warm or cool, just ask yourself, does it look like it has more red in it or more blue? If the answer is red, then it's a warm violet. And if it looks like it's more of a royal purple with more blue, then it leans cooler. For greens, if they look like they have more blue in them, they are cooler greens. And if they look like they have a little bit more yellow, then they're considered warm greens. Of course, this is all relative. Any color can look different depending on which colors are surrounding them. Now, blues can be a bit confusing. I've actually had one student say that she was totally baffled by blues. She couldn't figure out if they were warm or cool. She was imagining ocean water and the deep water in the ocean, which is colder water, right? It looks more like violet blue, but it's colder and the water that's closer to the shore which has more green in it actually feels warmer and I can see why that's confusing but if we come back to our color wheel red is a warmer color than green so if a blue has more red in it then it's a warm blue and if it has more green in it it's a cooler blue green is still on the cool side of the color wheel after all so now that we've talked about warm and cool let's see how well you can predict how some of our paint colors will mix together here's pop quiz number two which of these mixes do you think we will get when we combine ultramarine blue and gamboge nova what will happen when we combine hansa yellow light and turquoise blue what will be the result when we mix together scarlet lake and phthalo blue Did some of these color mixes surprise you? Why is it when I mixed my ultramarine blue and my gamboge nova, I ended up with kind of a muddy looking green? And when I mixed my scarlet lake and phthalo blue, why did I end up with kind of a murky purple? We're now gonna talk about how to avoid getting muddy colors. The answer is really simple and lies in your knowledge of your color wheel. For the most pure tertiary and secondary colors, that is for the purest greens, purples, and oranges, and all of those in-between colors, mix primary colors that are closer together on the color wheel. So for example, for the most beautiful jungle green, mix your cooler blue with your cooler yellow. And for the most perfect violet, mix your warm blue and your cool red. For the most perfect orange, mix your warm red and your warm yellow. Muddy colors happen when you mix either complementary colors Colors, or colors that are simply far away from each other on the color wheel. So let me show you an example of a muddy orange. I'm going to mix my cool yellow and my cool red. And you can see cool yellow and cool red are fairly far apart on the color wheel. The orange that I get is not terrible, but it's more of a peach color almost like another version of yellow ochre. Not your purest orange. You might be getting muddy greens if you're mixing warm blues with warm yellows. When I mix my gamboge nova with my ultramarine blue, this is the green I get. Now there's definitely a time and a place for a green like that. These are such beautiful earth tones. In fact, I prefer the term earthy tones versus muddy colors. I don't think there is such a thing as muddy colors. And ultimately, these are gonna be much more useful if you're painting a nature scene than this green will be. You don't see this green in nature quite as often. And finally, if you've been getting brownish purples instead of these pure violets, chances are you're mixing a cool blue with a warm red. Let me show you that Scarlet Lake and Thalo Blue example again. It ends up looking 
like quite a muddy purple. Although in my opinion, I think that's beautiful. Makes a great purple for shadow tones and rocks and foliage and nature. But as I said, if your aim is to get the brightest secondary colors possible, mix the closest primaries on the color wheel. So let me show you an example of how to get the brightest green. Mix your cool yellow with your cool blue and look at that, it's beautiful. And to get the prettiest orange, mix a warm yellow with a warm red. For the most flawless violet, mix a warmer blue with a cooler red. Here I'm going to use quinacridone rose and ultramarine blue. And one more reason you might be getting muddy colors is perhaps you're mixing complementary colors together. If you mix a yellow and a purple, or a green and a red, or a blue and an orange, you're going to get something that is neutral, like a brown or a gray. Complementary colors tend to cancel each other out. I'll show you what I mean. One of my favorite browns is actually a combination of sap green and permanent alizarin crimson. And when I mix those two together, I get quite a nice non-granulating brown. When you mix purple and yellow, you'll also end up with brown or more of a grayish brown depending on what the ratio is. It's a great way to get browns and grays is by mixing your complementary colors. And one of my favorite combinations that I actually use all the time is to mix ultramarine blue with a reddish brown burnt sienna, which can serve as a primary. So when you mix burnt sienna and ultramarine, you get a really nice neutral gray. Isn't that pretty? No such thing as muddy colors in my opinion. All of these colors have their use, but it's just so helpful to know how to find them and mix them when you need them. If muddy colors have been plaguing you for a while, just keep a color wheel close by and double check your colors next to your color wheel. It's a lot easier to tell if a color is cool or warm if you have other colors to compare it to. Understanding warm and cool colors will help you achieve any color mix you want, whether that's earth tones or more pure secondary colors. Once you know how colors relate to one another on the color wheel, you'll be able to confidently mix the exact colors you need for any project you tackle. Learning how to use warm and cool colors can also be a tool for creating different moods and establishing perspective in a painting. Now I could make an entire video on each of those two topics, but I'll just touch on them briefly here. If you want to inspire a certain mood, say feelings of happiness, joy, joy, summer, celebration, invitation, movement, daylight, sunshine, or heat, use your warm colors. And if you want to create a mood that's evoking mystery or winter, nighttime, sadness, contemplation, calm, meditation, gloom, or tranquility, use cool colors. And here's what I mean when I say that color temperature can help establish perspective in a painting. When you look outside, off in the distance, things that are further away appear more blue or purple. As they get closer, we see warmer colors. Use this knowledge to help you choose colors that will either push something back or pull it forward in space. All right, last pop quiz. Which color would you mix with Scarlet Lake to make this perfect orange? Which of these three colors would you mix with lemon yellow to create this gorgeous jungle green? Last one, which color would you mix with permanent alizarin crimson to make this neutral brown? Great job! Ultimately, the best way to become a master of color mixing is to just dig in and paint. I recommend sticking with the same colors on your palette for at least a year so you can get really well acquainted with the colors that are already on your palette before adding in any new colors. Start simple. All you really need are two sets of primaries, warm and cool, and a couple of mixers like a dark and a brown, and that's pretty much it. By the way, if you're curious about which colors are on my palette that I have on my desk all the time, check out this video next and I'll see you right over there.